All right, so hey, y'all doing boys? Hope you're doing well on that. In today's video, we've finally got patch notes for tomorrow's JP update, and my oh my, am I excited? I know I don't particularly play the JP version, but I was chilling in bed last night and I saw this, and I was like, yo, we're getting a new Slater, and it's an SSR. I could not be happier now. This main page, this front page is pretty lackluster, usually how it is, but if we jump over here, we can see the banner. Look at how sick the artwork are for those two. I mean, new Deanne as well is absolutely amazing. I am a bit confused about it though. We now have four like original named Deannes. We have the base Deanne, we have giant Deanne, we have the Ragnarok Deanne, which is another small Deanne, and we have this Deanne, which is another giant Deanne with a new name, which should have good stats, which I'm happy about. Pretty sure, I haven't actually looked at the animations yet, but I could imagine they're gonna be pretty good. And the new Slater is just, it's the same name Slater, so obviously he's gonna have the terrible sub stats, but with building him some UR gear, I'm sure we could make him definitely viable. I looked at his, like, having a look at like his passive and whatnot, he looks absolutely insane. But jumping down here, of course, we have our tickets, and in the banner, actually, we do have all of the previous Halloween units, which is really, really nice. Two Slater in that, and the Paladin Gotha, which is the Halloween Gotha. All have boosted rates, and then down in here, just in the general pickup pool, Halloween Elaine and Halloween Meliodas, which I don't have either of, so they're gonna be really good picks for me. Halloween Gila, which was free to play on the last Halloween event, but if you didn't play, then once again, very good pickup. Uh, Great Desire Hendrickson, I'm guessing this is like the green demon Hendrickson. Soldiers of Estorosa of Charity for. I'm guessing these are gonna be like the summonable commandments. I couldn't see them putting on like coin shop commandments on a banner like this. So, what is it? Think a moment. Blue Zoldris, Red Estorosa, Red Sariel, uh, Blue Nanashi, and a fun party. I believe that's the Red Oslo and Hawk, but either other, none, neither of the Oslo and Hawks are really good, so to say. So, no like crazy wins there, but as per usual, we are getting the 600 gem banner. At this point, who would I recommend? Just off looking at them at paper, would 100% be Slater. I know I'm a Slater fanboy, and that's definitely biased. We were thinking we were going to get an Escanor with this Halloween update, which <clears throat> I know would have been cool and all, but gotta show Slater some love. It has been since release, since we've had even any attention to Slater, and like a couple weeks after the release, we had the Slater costume, the blue one, which I wasn't spending money on the game, so I didn't get. But other than that, like we've gotten his Halloween costume, and I think that's it when it turns like comes like new stuff given to Slater. But jumping over here, we have his translations for his passive pvp only when the hero gets attacked it receives 80 percent less damage from critical hits and gives a two turn increase of attack by 10 percent to all allies doesn't stack so it's not just completely op but instantly just looking at this guy like he's obviously meant for barn and he looks like he's going to do a really good job at stopping margaret the not taking like you know any damage basically at all from crits saves him so much and just almost instantly nullifies Escanor being able to do anything from Due to the fact that he is an old unit, this passive is kind of buffed in a way. Because he has such low crit resistance, Escanor is almost guaranteed to crit Red SR Slater, and this Slater has the exact same stats. So he's literally just going to be taking 80% less damage from any Escanor. And same when it comes to Margaret, like she is going to be critting so often on him, probably guaranteed. He's just going to be taking no damage for it. So insanely good passive there. His first card. Deals 400% damage a single target enemy and seals all attacks and ultimates, which includes a skill effect. So, I mean, looking at this, we really have to see what it's like on the one and two start. Same with like the second skill. It could vary like on use heaps, but usually, you know, they always only show us these three star cards. So have to see when he comes out. But I mean, um, seals all attacks and ultimate skills, includes skill effects. Yeah, is extremely good, especially if like wouldn't see them giving this to him on level one but like as level two he's definitely like good like if you have slater twiggo and uh sorry not slater purgatory barn twiggo and this slater i could see some insanely good teams being built but second card here which is like the main whole kind of reason you'd probably want to get him reduce 40 percent of attack for three turns to a single target enemy and only allows attack skills only allows attack skills obviously is meant to instantly just spam on margaret so that she can't you know get that breath of bless up We've been seeing a lot, like, especially with the last, like, most recent unit we've got on Global, being Festival Gotha, having these units that disable buff cards, like, the meta's just gonna keep doing circles in the point where, like, you'll see, like, we've just gotten units that do, like, really big damage, and then units that can buff themselves to counteract that damage, and then we're getting units that seal buffs, and then it's eventually gonna come back around to, like, either units doing big damage or something along the lines, but 
Honestly, I'm so keen for this slayer. The same ultimate as before has the restrict recovery skills. And you know, you can use the Simon as association for the extra ultimate. I do feel as if though, maybe some update in the future, they should give all of like the release characters, or at least some of the ones they want to, these, I forget what they're called now, because they haven't had any since release, but the, I'm just going to call them combined attack. The combined attack ultimates, I feel like something they should definitely add a little bit more, but jumping over to the DN here. New DN, unfortunately we can't read the names because they're not translated, but enemies that use a skill will receive 20% more damage for three turns, activates when participating in battle, excludes deathmatch, activates before using skill, can stack four times. Honestly, convenient, like reading that passive, I'm a tiny bit confused. Enemies that use skill will receive 20% more damage for three turns. I don't know if maybe that's like a translation issue. It seems right, but at the same time, that seems like really, really, unless it's like only buff skills or something, 20% more damage is really, really strong, which I know like with the game and power creep happening, look, we're getting units like this go through and Margaret and like Ragnarok DN. We're going to start seeing more like crazy overpowered passives and more passive that are just massive paragraphs. Maybe that is right. And like, who knows, maybe she could be really good for the bird raid. If that applies, I mean, it says not in deathmatch, so we'll just have to wait and see. Her first card deals 500% damage, ignores defense damage to a single target enemy. That's the power strike, so we'll... Ignores defense damage to a single target. I'm guessing what's that trying, that what the translation is, is the power strike. So if so, is definitely being made for the bird, right? I mean, anything that ignores defense is instantly good. That fourth stage on like the, uh, the first one, it's so, so, like, it's so RNG based. Like, having a second, even just having a second unit that can draw you cards for that would make it so incredibly easier. Only thing is, though, with having, you know, DM be a giant, is Gotha instantly gets ruled out of the question. The Halloween Gotha with his passive, obviously, having one ally of each race gets the attack boost. You usually want to use the new Matrona or, like, a giant taunt DM, but since this DM's out, if you would do, do that, you'd obviously have to replace it with this, so... Having those two together, maybe we could see some other team and like chuck Gotha out and I don't know, I just feel like Gotha has like a lot of use in that, but second card deals 180% damage to all enemies and seals attack for two turns. Doesn't work on the um bird, the attack disable, but at least it's an AoE attack disable. I found with the Ragnarok Dian, when I was using her a bunch, she has the single target attack disable, and it only applies on level two, so. Why not with how much units have progressed? Just give her the AoE, it would have made her so much better. Or what I figured it'd be even better and would make her so much better is give her a stun instead. I know she'd be so insanely annoying at that point, but just give her a stun. For the ultimate, deals 630% sever damage to a single target enemy, sever three times crit chance. Sever ultimates are usually really good, and especially with her being green, this does help her counter Margaret a lot. She seems like, once again, will be another really good unit to counter Margaret. Jumping over here, we do have, of course, all the costumes. I'm <clears throat> really big. F I'm a fan of all of them, but not like a really big fan of any. Like none of them stand out massively to me, which we'll see as we get onto some of these next couple pages. But this first DM one, like the kind of glacier one, I reckon is really sick. And these two ones are kind of like cool. I can imagine this one will just be bought for the 60 gems. And upon release, you'll have to buy these ones with money. But hey, no new costumes for a Slater, which is expected but <clears throat> I would have liked something and this this is one of the things I was so keen about we are of course you know if you go to the shop you'll be able to buy all the Halloween costumes they can be purchased right now in the JP version but two new costumes one for Festival Gotha which means Festival Gotha is getting five weapons like headpieces and cosmetics for Assault Mode Meliodas which is crazy which is absolutely ridiculous and Margaret obviously has her fight but this is just both these costumes I'm such a big fan of Bro, what is this? Edgy Margaret looks so sick with the red crown of thorns. It is beyond awesome. Hopefully it has good subsets, but at this point, like once again, if you play Margaret, you already have her five costumes. You already have her maxed out. This is just cosmetic purposes and I hate buying costumes when I already have the characters maxed out, but both of these are just too good to pass up. And I mean, what is that for Gotha? That is, Gotha's three costumes at the moment, I'm like, I really like all of them, whether it's like the mossy one looks really sick, the steampunk looks really sick, and the kind of like god-esque kind of one is also really cool. I'm a little bit less fan of that one, mainly because of how Gotha looks in it, but this is just so sick. And with the band over the eyes, 
it is just way too cool. Got that Gojo vibe going on, but hey, I mean, honestly, along with the Slater, these two costumes are probably my most favorite part about the update. They just did such a good job. I mean, with, with the original Halloween update, they did do a fair few costumes, which I was a little bit iffy about. The, probably my favorite one from it, I was a little bit sad with what they did to Barn. He just doesn't look the best in his. The Guild Thunder one where he's dressed up as the Witch Doctor is so, so sick. But I mean, I'm pretty sure after that we go back here, yeah, takes us to this main page. So I mean, super, super excited if you guys play the JP version. Let me know how you find this update, but hey, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please hit like button, subscribe, it really means a lot to me, and I'll see you guys for some more Grand Cross content.